As I'm sure you all know, Forza Horizon 4 has been announced. And as I'm sure you all also know, it's looking pretty good. Of Dan's moves, memes. Can we uh, see the dab? It's, it's, if, I'm, if I'm so, I apologize, but there, <laughs> there we go. Like, like, like. <laughs> so, needless to say, I'm very much looking forward to it. But it's only coming out in like October or something. So, I decided to instead look back at Horizon 3 for the meantime, and as I did, I noticed there were a lot of things wrong with the game. So I decided to make a video about five of them. I'm gonna try to keep this list interesting, so let's get the easy, obvious ones out of the way. The map. My god, the map for this game is absolutely awful. I... <laughs> it should go without saying that this is probably one of, if not the biggest issue with this game. Simply put, the map is too flat and puts way too much emphasis on top speed. There's too many long, straights and very wide, forgiving roads. If you want me to be completely honest though, the only part of the map that's kind of okay is Yara Valley, because it's a bit of an exception to the whole very flat thing. There's actual road elevation in there, plus a handful of, you know, really great rally stages, which I happen to be a very big fan of. <laughs> However, there's one more complaint I have about the map, which is... Not something that you hear people talk about very often, and that is the way the map itself is used. Let me give you a few examples. Yara Valley, North Plain Sprint. Now, as you can see, the start of this track is really good. It has a really nice mix of both technical low-speed corners and a bunch of higher speed sections. There's also a bunch of pretty comfy elevation changes here and there, which add to the overall driving feel of the track. And then all of that is ruined by the massive never-ending straight at the end. Surfer's Paradise Park Cross Country Circuit. I... I'm just at a loss for words for this one. Did we really need this track? We didn't. Okay, we didn't need this track. This is probably the worst track in the entire game. Surfer's Paradise Beach Cross Country Circuit... Yeah, we didn't need this one either. Also, what is this? It's barely not a drag strip. Look, my point is, not even the developers know how to use their own map to the fullest. There's a bunch of potentially good tracks ruined by stupid decisions, tracks so bad they shouldn't even be in the game to begin with, and a lot of very good trails that would end up being great tracks but were left unused. Like, let's be real here, when was the last time you went to the Pink Lakes? I only went there once, and that was to drive through all of the roads in the main game. That's... actually that's enough whining about the map, should probably talk about something else before the video gets dragged on for way too long. Okay, on to number two. Number two is actually like indirectly related with the whole previous map issue and that would be the PI system. Now I do have to give credit where it's due. It is very hard to come up with a perfect rating system for a game with so many cars and with so much customization. And the Forza franchise as a whole, Horizon and Motorsport, probably have the best rating system out of any racing game that allows this much customization. You know, I actually think Horizon 3's PI system is close to perfect, apart from a few cars who got screwed over by it here and there. But, I do believe that the PI rating in this game suffers from a severe case of the right thing at the wrong place. Alright, so picture this. You're a turn 10 or playground games, whoever it is that makes these games. You're a developer at the company behind Horizon 3, and your boss orders everyone to come to a meeting. Naturally, you, being involved in the development of the game, arrive at the meeting, sit down in a big round table surrounded by your colleagues, and wait for your boss to start speaking. There's an image of the entire map for Horizon 3 on display on a projector screen. Your boss stands up and starts speaking. Okay boys, so how are we doing the PI system? Do we give more importance to tires and control, or power and top speed? You take a look at the map and you just can't help but notice the sheer amount of massive straights all over it. Naturally, you raise your hand. Here it is, your big moment, this is it. You're gonna get that raise, that promotion, you're gonna pay all those bills, get that dream car you've always wanted. Because of all the straights and high speed sections, I think we should make power and top speed related upgrades cost more PI than things like tires, you say. And then you get fired. You see the problem here, too much importance is given to control instead of power. Now obviously this would be fine in a map like, let's say, Horizon 4, 
or anything with corners rather, but Horizon 3 is just nothing but straights. This makes engine swaps and full power builds very broken and instead of rewarding you for knowing how to build a car with a perfect balance of speed and drivability, it instead punishes you for not turning your car into a retard mobile. This is the fastest car in Forza Horizon 3 by far. This is what your online adventures are going to look like. This is what you're going to be racing against. Nearly 300 miles an hour now! Also, if you have no idea of how to tune your own cars for each class to include a perfect mix of both power and control, be sure to download some of the tunes I have in my Forza storefront. Here's my gamer tag. Go bully some on your adventure kits for me. Third issue, and one of the things that personally bugs me the most, the sound. Putting this on the list might be nitpicking, but I'm a big sound guy, and to put it very lightly, there are a lot of things wrong with the engine sounds in this game, as I'm sure anyone who's played the game can agree with. I'm going to make you listen to three different cars in real life, and then I'll play one of their engine sounds in Forza, and you'll have to guess which one of them I'm currently driving. Now for the guessing game, which one of these am I currently driving? If you answer the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9, congratulations, you are correct. If you answer the Abarth 695B Postal, congratulations, you are also correct. And if you even answered the 2015 Ford Focus RS, congratulations, you are correct as well. Congratulations! They all sound the exact same in Forza's eyes. I know engine sound isn't going to be personally affecting anyone's performance whenever they're playing Forza, but, in my opinion, they can ruin the driving experience from time to time. Then again, this is a very subjective thing, I mean... I'm pretty sure that I'm the only type of guy who would willingly drive the car in Forza just because it sounds good, even if it's not the best. The engines themselves aren't where the issues end, though. Forced induction is also a very big problem for the Forza sound department, for some reason. Oh yeah, and since I know some of you are a bit more on the I don't know anything about the cars side of the community, forced induction is what you call things like turbos and superchargers, and you know, those things make noise. I like this new weapon. The Forza team doesn't really seem to know that. If you guys were unfortunate enough to be around at the time when I uploaded initial day content, you wouldn't know that in my Wataru video I complained a lot about the lack of a supercharger whine when I was driving the car. Only a select few cars actually have a supercharger whine in this game, and most of them are V8s while others are weird to say the least. Not on the beat! 
And I mean, personally, this upsets me a lot because I'm a big fan of superchargers, but the turbo guys aren't really having it any better. It's basically the same issues. Some turbos are very loud and their spool and flutter noises are very easily heard. And others require you to really pay attention in order to do so. Now, I get that Forza's car list is pretty large and you can't really get each car to sound exactly how you'd like it to, but Forza reuses assets way too much. And speaking of Forza's car list, let's talk about our next issue with the game, customization. This, again, is another issue that multiple people have talked about already, and is actually one of the things people both love and hate this game for. I both agree and disagree with all the complaints Forza gets regarding the customization department. On the one hand, it gets a lot of flack because people say there's a lack of aftermarket body parts. I'm probably going to hell for saying this, but aftermarket body parts should not be given that much importance. Most of the people that complain about Horizon's customization do so by comparing it to Need for Speed which doesn't really work. They are two very different games with very distinct environmental settings. Horizon, while being an open world game, much like Need for Speed, follows the theme of a festival, and as such, things are a lot more cleaner, organized, and less extreme. Need for Speed follows the street racing scene, notorious for things like stancing, obnoxious body modifications, neons, show cars, and just overall, a more extreme tuning culture etc. And while Horizon does offer the option to organize street races, they are nowhere near the main focus of the game. I'm not saying I'm completely opposed to the idea of them adding this type of customization to the game. Even if I dislike it a lot, a large majority of their kid- um, I'm sorry, I mean- a large majority of their community loves this type of body styling a lot. What I am saying, however, is that you shouldn't add six different aftermarket body kits for the GT86 and not add the official Toyota Aero pack. Likewise for the Integra, I want to make it look like this, not this. Oh, but that's not the worst part. The biggest difference with Horizon games compared to the motorsport games, in my opinion, is that since Horizon is an open world, you have the option to go rallying. Now let's see how our dear Horizon treats our super awesome rally cars. Oh, that's... Um, yeah, yikes. You know, I think there's something wrong with these cars, but I just can't quite put my finger on it. I forgot to say this during the sounds part, but I absolutely despise reused assets. I can understand the reasoning behind them, saving work and space, but too much is too much. I mean, seriously. This is a Lancia Delta Hey Jeff Integrale Evolution. I'm sure you're all very well acquainted with this car. It's one of the most iconic rally cars of all time, and, what a known fact, is the most successful rally car to have ever been made, as shown by the images on screen. Naturally, with this much of a reputation, it's going to have plenty of customization options, right? I mean, it's such an important car, surely a rally body kit. Maybe a safari body kit if we're lucky, no, no. It just has the same copy-paste Forza quote-unquote rally parts that basically any rally car that they didn't want to put effort into researching has. Meanwhile, on the other side of the globe, the Fairway VZ has a full safari kit. I mean, I'm not complaining, I love it, but safari rallying isn't exactly the first thing you think of whenever you see a Fairway VZ, so maybe the Forza team should get their priorities straight? Oh, and for the love of god, add more racing body kits, not this Rocket Bunny Liberty Walk trash. More like this, less like this. With all that being said, it's time to move on to the final issue with Horizon 3, and oh boy, is there a lot to be said about this one. The car list. This one's going to cause World War 3 in the comments section. Horizon 3's car list follows the classic example of quantity over quality, and I mean, I can't really blame the Horizon devs for doing that, I mean... Most of the player base for this game consists of kids, and the devs are just giving kids what they like. Now, what do kids like, you might ask? Modern supercars or sports cars, old American bricks, and 90s JDM soapboxes. Now, before you go off writing an essay in the comment section because you feel like I've just insulted you and your entire bloodline, I'm not saying that only kids exclusively are allowed to drive these cars. And if you do drive these cars and are not a fetus who just learned what a controller is, 
props to you, well done on being an exception to the rule. What I am saying, however, is that from my experience, most of the people who behave like retards will be driving one of these types of cars, and they will only know and care about these types of cars. You can thank the Fast and Furious and the Michel D for that. I feel like there's a very distinct lack of early 2000s cars, along with European car brands that aren't Ferrari or Lamborghini. Just to put it into perspective, there's 31 Ferraris in this game, 44 Fords, and 25 Chevrolets. Meanwhile, Renault has 6 cars. Do you know who has more than 6 cars? Fucking Hoonigan. Peugeot has 1 car, TVR has 1 car, Hot Wheels has 4 cars. A toy company has more cars than 2 car brands combined in a car game. My main complaint about Horizon's car list is the way they handle diversity within it. In any car game, especially in one as vast and quote-unquote diverse as Horizon, I believe that your car list should consist of a little bit of everything for everyone. You shouldn't include 31 Ferraris and give us 6 Alfa Romeos. You shouldn't give us 44 Fords and give us 3 Plymouths. And most importantly, you should not set your car game in Australia if you're not going to give us this, this, or this. Oh, and for the love of god, don't even get me started on all the SUVs. At least Horizon 4's car list looks slightly better. Not to say that they got over their whole lots of cars for one part of the community and nothing for the rest issue, but they did add some pretty nice obscure cars because of the game being set in Britain. For instance, TVR now has three cars, which I'm very excited about, and not to mention the return of Volkswagen, along with many other welcome additions to the Forza roster. And so, needless to say, I'm very much looking forward to playing Horizon 4.